Why do you look at me for intro on these? You're, this is your show. <laughs> well, maybe I want crowd participation, huh? I'm not getting crowd participation. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. All right. Um, well, this episode was supposed to be solo leveling volume four. Um, and I considered getting Knickknack to just read the, the web webcomic chapters, but I didn't know exactly where the book was going to start and end. Um, so I was a little worried, and the book itself hasn't shipped yet. Um, it's been pushed back a few times, so the book has not arrived. So instead, Hanakimi, volumes one through three. Or for those of you who don't know what this is, you can also find it under the name Hanazakari no Kimitachi E for you in full bloom. It has um, a couple. Um, it does not have an anime series, but it does have two Japanese dramas um, with different one each with a different cast made in different years um, and there is also a Korean version of this and I believe a Taiwanese version of this um, the Korean version is actually kind of funny because it's not produced by a video or a TV company but it's actually produced and sponsored by the music company SM Town starring Minho from Shiny and Amber from FX as the two main characters and it was actually kind of meant as a piece of like commercial advertisement for when their groups debuted and had new singles. Um, none of which is of course relevant to the fact that we read the first three volumes but uh, I really fucking love Hanakimi. Anyway, so we read the first three volumes of Hanazakari E um, for you in full bloom. Um, I did have the option of giving Knickknack just the first volume because I do actually have the first two volumes as single editions, but they're no longer published in English as single editions and they were only briefly released as uh, three in ones. Uh, and I do have the entire series as three in one volumes, but I only have, I think, four volumes in singles. Um, we had a little bit of extra time, so I figured just do the three volumes. Yeah, also, I felt like one volume of this wasn't really representative of how much I loved this series. Um, yeah. So, so uh, the, the basic plot of this is the main character, this character, goes to, uh, enrolls in an all-boys school in Japan. Um, and she, she's actually from the U.S., uh, but she enrolls in an all-boys school in Japan so that she can meet her hero, Sano Izumi, who's a high jumper. Um, and she doesn't tell anyone, she doesn't tell her family she's enrolling in an all-boys school, cuts off her hair, dresses as a man, and enrolls in this school. And she ends up roommates with Sano, and Sano has sworn never to high jump again. Um, and she takes umbrage with this and is like, I am going to get you to high jump if it is the last thing I do. Um, and then there's this wonderful love triangle between them and this other dude called Nakutsu, who is super into her, but he thinks that what? Nothing. What? He's had a yawn. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, he thinks that she's a he, right? Uh, Sano actually figures it out pretty early. They, some stuff happens. But he thinks that she's a he, so he has a gay crisis trying to figure out whether or not he's gay. Uh, the answer is that he's definitely bi. If I lifted your phone and showed them your wallpaper, would you kill me? <laughs> Look, you can. <laughs> you know what the worst part is? That's the wallpaper. This is the lock screen. <laughs> <laughs> we stand in this household we stand um and it's it's basically just this this entire series is about shenanigans um there's no real learning happening it's just shenanigans in the first three volumes we get a couple of events like they have a vacation where they end up going to then the, so they're separated into the three dorms, right? The martial arts dorm, the sports dorm, and, like, the theater kids dorm, basically, is how it breaks down. But um, her dorm goes on this vacation in Volume 3 to this beach place that one of their parents owns or older sisters owns. Um, and there's a couple other things that happen, like the play and stuff. So uh, how did you feel about Volumes 1 through 3? So, this might be the best example of I really don't feel like I'm the target demographic of this series at all. The, oh, okay. To clarify, this did come out in Shoujo Beat. 
like exclusive. This is not a shonen. This is not a seinen. This is shoujo. Which there are shoujo that I can enjoy. <laughs> this just isn't one of them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, yeah. I, I Look, guess a lot of these kinds of stories, no matter what demographic they're going for, are based around a rather stupid premise. The problem is, I think for you, it's a little easier to digest the premise than I am. I think, you know what the other thing is? I didn't actually read the manga first. I watched the Japanese TV show with uh, Sh uh, Shun Oguri, um, that particular one. So if you're going to go watch the, the Japanese Hanakimi, the one with Shun Oguri is the better one, and it is available on YouTube. It's only 12 or 13 episodes. They're like an, uh, an hour-ish each. Um, and the drama is fantastic. Like, it is amazingly well done super funny they managed to capture all of the comedy and jokes without being too overly dramatic and serious in a relatively short series and it, it is one of the first j dramas i ever watched um and to this day it's one of my absolute favorites and it does that kitschy thing that the oron movie does where like sometimes random anime effects appear in live action like they'll just be like blush will appear on their cheeks and somebody has just tinted that section of the video red like as a as a joke for the the anime effects um also the creepy dark depressing guy is the same guy who plays tamaki in the oran movies which is pretty funny and shun oguri i actually have watched in a lot of movies and tv because he's a very famous japanese actor and one of my favorite roles that he's done is uh crow zero um, which is a movie that I might eventually show you at some point, because I really enjoy it, hmm. but I also feel that it is very, very far from a demographic that you'd enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I, I've enjoyed shoujo stuff before. It's just just not this one. It, I think it had a little bit of more of an uphill climb because it was shoujo. That's fair. Case. That's fair. Like, it is. You are You are reading it from the perspective of the main character who is... Who's female. That's not bothered yeah. me before. I think... My problem, I think, was from the very get-go, her motivation for doing, for like hiding her gender and going into this school was, I want to see him high jump again, which I think is the most stupid motivation for something this, in like this complicated, I have seen in a while. Yeah, she goes to a lot of effort to do this, like. She, like, convinces the school nurse to, like, not tell people that she's female. She... This is, like, the equivalent of me seeing, like, me seeing some, like, young adult to teenage actress that goes to an all-girls school on a Disney Channel so and saying, she's hot, I'm gonna go and, uh, uh, go to her school by cross-dressing. What's the fucking... Is it She's All That? Is, is the, the British movie about the girl who dresses as a guy to play soccer? And then in the end, see, it's just like, like that, boobs. I can see something like that. Yeah. You want to play soccer, you feel like you're not... That makes sense. No. She, she's going to the school because she's horny for a celebrity she saw on TV. So there's a little more to it, but that doesn't come into play in the first three volumes. She has slightly deeper motivations than, than just, I saw him on TV and he's Sure. Hot. But the entire thing to me just felt like an excuse to get a bunch of pretty boys onto the page. Hey, hey, we stand the pretty boys. By the way, my favorite relationship in this is between the RA, the dorm advisor, Namba Minami, and the guy who is, like, desperately in love with him. And Namba's just like, no, I'm a ladies' man, stay away. And just this, this guy is doggedly pursuing him. And it has led to some of the greatest scenes in a live-action J-drama I've ever seen. Hmm. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's fucking stunning. Yeah. I'm really sorry, because I, I knew going into this, this is one you really liked. Look, I to be honest, I personally think, like, one of these days, I will show you the first episode of, mm -hmm. of the J-drama, and I think that you're going to like the J-drama much more, because the J-drama cuts out a lot of the more shonen -es, or shoujo-esque uh, parts of it to make it into almost a pure comedy. Um, which it, it plays off really well as a comedy. Um, the romance part of it is a little, little... I gotta admit, that romance aspect of it just did zero nothing for me. Yeah, it's, it's better as a comedy, I have to admit, but I still love it. I really, really do, and it is one of the few series that I have collected the entire series of up on my shelf over there. Um... 
And it is kind of the start of, like, I do have, like, kind of a series of shoujo things to, to have you read. And I already know that you're going to like one of them. So sometime in the next couple months, a video will come out about Hanayori Dango. And I know that oh, you... Oh, yeah, I've seen the drama for that yeah. one. I actually really like that one. You're a fan of Hanayori Dango. And you're going to you're gonna like the manga, you know? Yeah, more. And that. then, you know, I personally think that you're also... I think you're going to like the wallflower more than you like Hanakimi because the like wallflower is more That comedic. other one, was it Boys Over Flowers? I like that one too from the little I read. Boys Over Flowers is Hanagori Dango. Oh, that's right. There's another one that I don't remember. Yeah. Um, is it Fritz Basket? No, no. It. I might even be wrong. This might not even be a manga or one that you're particularly yeah. interested in. So let's just drop it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do have a few more shoujos to show you, but I myself don't actually read that much shoujo. Um, in, in manga form, I actually read a lot of shonen. So this is out of out of the box for even me. I have like a single shoujo shelf behind us, which is partially ex obscured at the moment by 86, which is does not have a space yet. Um, I need more bookcases. I think my reaction to this, it, there's some suspension of disbelief that I have a hard time doing. Whereas I feel like if I showed you something like Rent a Girlfriend, you wouldn't be able to suspend your disbelief on that. a lot of that too. It's just the target audience for these stupid rom-coms can yeah. be very apparent in some cases. Yeah, and I'm kind of a big fan of this stupid, like, comedic rom-com, which is centered around some really stupid decision that the girl makes. Well, they're all centered around really stupid decisions, let's be honest well, here. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, well, Hana Yoridango's not really. No, she no. She gets a that scholarship. One, there's a bit of suspension of disbelief as far as how realistic that scenario is. It, <laughs> yeah. But it's still really... There's a you you do that a lot in anime already with the scenario. I think it's character motivations that could be a little troubling for the demographics. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess if we want to go back to a previous discussion, you had a hard time relating to a lot of what Subaru uh, expresses because it's a little That's bit more true. of an exaggerated version of what uh, of what of like some of the experiences men go through. Yeah, so, yeah. I, it might be a similar situation to that. I think. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know if I'll make you read any more of this. If there's an anime or something and you put it in the I'm not going to go like, oh, no. Cause I don't hate this. I don't hate this. Let me be clear. The, see, this is what hurts me most in this world. Because there are four shoujo series that I am in love with. Mm -hmm. This, The Wallflower, Fruits Basket, and Hanayori Dango. This is the only one of the four never to receive an anime adaption. It only has the four uh, Asian dramas. Two Japanese, one Taiwanese, and one but Korean. But this is a pretty famous story. It's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. I What I'll probably do is I'll show you the drama at some yeah, point. Yeah, one day you can I show me the drama. I think you're really going to enjoy the drama. Um, and you know what's funny is you haven't seen the... Uh, the uh, Hanayori Dango, Boys Over Flowers. You haven't seen that anime, but you've no, seen I've the not. drama. I've seen clips that you've shown me. Yeah, the the anime looks very Sailor Moon. It's old, like it's it's the uh, nineties. Like my reaction to this, like when I when, at, while I was reading this to Seki was, I'm gonna be able to hold a discussion, but I don't know how much reading more is actually gonna change much of what I say. So like as much as I don't I don't hate this, it's not even horrendously boring to me. Yeah, this is also, I will say, the, the art style here is very, um, it's very 90s to early 2000s shoujo beat. Like, this is yeah. actually pretty much the same art style as is used in both Wallflower and Hanayori Dango. I just think every, like, the more of this we cover, the less I'm going to have to say about it. That's fair. That's fair. So we may, maybe we'll be back with a, uh, maybe in a couple of months we'll be back with a uh, Seki's uh, off the YouTube um, <laughs> drama adaptions. <laughs> Seki's drama corner. <laughs> Forcing Knickknack to watch J-dramas since 2022. <laughs> Although if we do that, we have to start with St. Onisan. I almost feel like dramas would just fold into talk no jutsu or something like that. Just like it little might. like one-off discussions we have. Yeah, because I don't might. see ourselves making that a series like we did with Off the Shelf. I don't know. I'm not willing to make it a series like we did with Off the Shelf. <laughs> I will attempt to change his mind. But with that being said, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Everybody, check out our content um, and have fun. <laughs>